wanted to share with you some baby chicks that we hatched out from some of our eggs from site one and site two. We did find out at site two I needed to improve my rooster to hen ratio, so we've done that. Um, but I've got these little darlings inside. I've raised chicks in the past and no problem. Usually I put newspaper down, but I have found this works so much better. It's just a real thin pine bedding, I think it said something like for horse stalls or whatever. It really keeps the odor down and absorbs, you know, their, their manure. So I've got it all set up there. I have to change this water quite often, even though I have it sitting on a block of wood, they seem to flip everything up there. Right now they're over there huddling, they're all eating. And I've got my heat lamp, even though it's indoors. But this year, instead of just having them on the table or something, I have them in a dog pen, which has worked out really well. So if they get out, they can uh, have a safe place to go. Also, my dog can't get to them in there, and uh, but she can look all she wants. So that's worked out really nicely. They're getting pretty big. If you notice, they're getting their feathers. So I'm gonna have to do something soon. And uh, my son, Brent, has been working on something outdoors for them. So today I'm fencing in this chicken coop, a small one for uh, mom's old chicks. So she actually wants a run and everything. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put another run in between these two runs of chickens that mom's already got. So I've already, uh, I've already got a lot of this all the way around the bottom. Now that there is fencing you use for the bottom of rabbit cages, little, little tiny small squares, that way the chicks can't run through. And eventually we'll have to tie some fence probably underground a little bit because I don't want nothing going underneath there and I don't want, I don't want the chicks being able to go under where it's, the ground ain't level, you know. And right now I'm putting on the, the roof then I'll go along the sides. I still got to make a door for here, or Brent will, somebody will, and we'll get it all fenced in too. So, not a whole lot to do today. Now, later on, I do plan on going back to my house, site two, and uh, work on that uh, building we've been working on, which I'll show you guys here this evening. All right, so I've already got this tied up on top. Now there's two sections. You got this section here and this section. This section here is pretty much done. I'll have to tie this section in with that though. And I just now started doing this. So whenever you do this, you're going to want to make sure you cut where you can tie it off around there. That's what I usually do. And yes, that does, uh, it pricks your fingers a bunch through there, but it's a lot cheaper doing it this way than uh, getting wire and just looping it through that way. All right, we got this row done. Now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go right there. I'm going to have to clip like one out of every one on one side. That way I can loop it and twist them together. Now the reason for the top is, uh, is for one, keep the chickens in there. Of course, these are mainly just going to be chicks through this little pen. But we got air predators, owls, uh, hawks, buzzards. They'll be wanting these chicks if they can get them. So this will help deter that. You also got uh, climbing animals like coons and possums that uh, that they'd actually be able to climb over and get in there too. So, so here in the woods, and this is where this is, this is all woods. Yeah, we cleared a bunch out, but it's still considered woods. So we gotta do everything we can to uh, keep the animals out. And like I said, we will have to go along the bottom and uh, 
put some stuff. The only thing I'm really worried about is snakes. Now, granted, they're not going to be able to go through this uh, rab meshing on the sides. But if there's any kind of like little gap where the ground ain't level, they'll be able to go under it. And they could also technically go through this kind of fence. Now, this here is just a uh, dog panel. Dog pen is all this is. So, granted, they'll have to go through all these chickens, but if they come at nighttime when they're at roost, then they'll be able to get in here and get to these chicks. So, we'll just be using a pair of 10 snips. You can use any kind of cutters, electrical cutters, whatever you got. Just anything will cut wire. And again, you want to cut one or every hole on one fence. You don't have to do the other side, but you need to cut on one side. And try to cut towards the end so that way you've got a longer wire sticking out to tie. Got all them cut. Alright, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. 
I'm just cutting one side and I am having to stretch this now this wire here is a little bit more stretchable than some of the chicken wire this has got the coating on it rust proof stuff but as you can see I got them all cut and I'll just loop them loop them in around here pull this tight and I'll stretch the fence a little bit too and we will be able to walk on one side pretty much without bending over too much got the back then so what it is I put a piece up here on the top tied it into the sides tied it in down here to this tied it in up here and I think what mom says she's gonna do she's gonna get more of these blocks and actually put them on the bottom so we probably won't have to bury anything she's gonna be doing all that okay so what's happening here is we're going to try to finish our chicken compound here and my son Philip is doing the pin that goes between the two pins that's going to connect to this coop and there's the door that the chickens will be able to come down and my plan is to put the young ones right here in the middle they'll be able to have a little bit of a run back here where the kids are playing right at the moment that's my first pin well i guess that's kind of the second pin actually and this is the first one that we had had originally in another area so uh we're going to have three areas here. They're going to be all combined into a chicken compound. Thank you, son. Yeah. I appreciate it. Hard work, isn't it? Nah. A lot of up and down work, isn't it? That's a lot of up and down. You don't feel 20 anymore, do you? No. <laughs> I just wish I felt your age now. <laughs> the chicks are beginning to venture out some. Some are not too impressed yet. I'm just kind of checking it out. We're down below. Might be tough to see, but we got some of them down there checking out things. Now the other chick, chickens, they've been out to the corner of their pens, checking them out too. They're like, what are those noisy things? If people see chickens doing this, don't worry, they're doing that on purpose. I'll show you this this group over here, they're doing it too. They're actually taking what we call a chicken bath, a dirt bath. And that kind of helps with some of the pests and things like that. And they get that dust up in there and it helps to kind of coat them and soothe them. So today I'm going to show you guys a simple hack to have like a equivalent to a Yeti cooler. So Jen, she won, she paid a, I forget how much she paid, but she got one of them big coolers. And had her get some of this stuff here. Now this is foam. And what it'll do is, is you'll drill holes all along the top. And then you'll take this, you'll shove it down in the hole, you'll squeeze it until it starts coming up, and then you go to the next hole, so on and so forth. And by the time it's done, you'll have 
you'll have a really good cooler that'll last a long, long time, keep things cold. So let's get on it. coming up out of this one now. So it already had some insulation in here, but it wasn't completely full, because it's, I'm putting the, pretty much this whole can down this one hole now, and it's spreading out, like I said, it's, I feel air coming out of this one. See, coming up. I got two cans, but I'm only I'm only gonna do this can. Now we'll just let this set up. It will take a knife, scrape it all off, and it'll be a lot more insulated now. Be like one of them Yeti coolers. Alright, so this is the market stand. We're uh I think at first the plan is to uh this is just have some produce out here. Like I said, we'll bring a cooler out here. I'll probably make a table for it for it to sit down into. And then somewhere I'll have like a money box. And we're gonna do the honor system for a little while. We probably won't put nothing like really expensive out here. But if it, if it does good, then we might try putting a little bit more expensive stuff as time goes on. But if it don't work out and people starts taking it without paying, then what we'll probably do is, is two, three times out of the week, we'll probably just have somebody set out here for for a certain amount of time. And we'll probably post it, which we'll probably paint this and put something on there. And then mom, she's at home right now. We're going to put a sign that kind of goes back and forth. That way people can see as they come down the road. And then we might put some other like little signs and screw them to the wall like eggs or peppers tomatoes whatever so that's the plan jen's been cleaning out all the hostas around the hostas and getting all the leaves that spilled up through the winter time and and all the weeds and everything growing up she's just throwing in the compost pile by the chickens looking all cute and we got quite a few rows of sweet corn. Uh, this last row here, this will be uh, sunflowers. And then we don't have anything planted like right next, right through here yet, which we might, I don't know. And we also got another little patch, which Daddy came and tilled this up. And of course, we put the 
market stand right here on part of it, but we still got a little patch of dirt here. We could plant something if we wanted. So we might do that. And then we also got a bunch of other plant too. Over there in that box and there beside the box. And on the back side of the greenhouse. Pastas is one of my absolute favorite plants. It is invasive and it multiplies like crazy. You can plant one and there's a ton of different varieties and you can plant them and they'll just multiply every year. We probably have 15 different ones in this bunch and then these others, I just planted one in like one each spot um, last year and now I've got a ton coming up right next to them. And we'll also take clippings and transplant them in different areas as well. We did that a bunch around the pond. So these are the flowers that come off the hostas every year. They um, are beautiful flowers. They're purple, pink, white, white. And the pods, these are the pods, and they pretty much all opened. So I had so many of these that I picked up. And so they are just gonna flower this whole area. This is where I dug, <clears throat> put that water line in at. Now, as you can see, we're not mowing right up here next to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that grass go to seed. And then hopefully whenever we cut it, we'll try to blow it on top of here all the way up. And cause grass seed is like ridiculous right now, guys. It's like a hundred dollars for like a big bag of it. So instead of doing that, we're just gonna let like I said, the grass grew up and mulch it down or cut it down later. I sure do appreciate you taking care of me. Well, yeah. Fixing my door up. That's what we're here for. <laughs> I think. Thank I'll you. be glad that I don't have to put that log up on the door to hold it shut anymore. <laughs> well, I ain't done yet. You may have to. Oh, no. Come on. You're better than that. I guess these new kits, they just don't match the old doors anymore. It's a good thing we had some of the parts. <clears throat> Show you around my greenhouse. Getting more stuff in here all the time. Been planting a few more flowers. My tomato plants. Some of them are starting a little bit slower than others, but I think we're going to be good on tomatoes. Got all kinds of other things here growing. I love being in here. It's so bright and airy. My little potting station. Long time, well, I mean, last uh, summer, my daughter-in-law, Tori, she, she made this for me. It's a potting station. And I have been using it, but it, it's so nice. And uh, you can't see it right now because under the pots there, it's got some of the grandkids' handprints on it. Okay. He wants to be heard. There he is. Show me. Oh, oh awesome. <laughs> I got a door handle. Let's get rid of this now. <laughs> you gotta shut your windows? I will shut my windows here soon. I'm not such a bad guy after all, am I? Look at that. I look 
it. You, the simple things. I'm telling you, the simple things are what counts. <laughs> I love you, babe. Thank you, honey. I love you, too. Merry Christmas. Oh, wait, uh, we got an anniversary coming up. Yeah. Happy I'm... anniversary. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed watching Chamberlain Family Farms. You can contact us at chamberlainff at gmail.com. You can also check us out on Facebook, Chamberlain Family Farms. We hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe.